Hello my dear students I hope you all have been doing well Today I am delivering you lecture number 1 part 2 and this is about ligand In lecture number 1 part 1 I already have explained you about the receptor and uh, this uh, lecture is about ligand as i have previously told you that uh, these two uh, topics ligand and receptor are the part of the receptor theory that we are going to uh, study in next few lectures and to study about receptor theory it is very much important to understand about both ligand and receptors now starting from uh, towards our topic ligands could be any substance it could be endo endogenous or exogenous substance it could be any chemical it could be any uh, protein or non protein molecule it could be any hormone and it could be any amino acid that can bind a receptor and as a signal and initiate intracellular activity that result on cell response so here are basic two uh, questions that what is this intracellular activity and what is this cell response so to understand we will uh, uh, one by one learn about uh, what is intracellular activity and what is this cellular response so to learn about the intracellular activity i choose this uh, simple diagram for you so here as you are seeing that li uh, uh, ligand is a, uh, that is a chemical message uh, i i will explain you uh, in next few slides what is chemical message here we have to understand just uh, right that ligand is a molecule that bind with the receptor and initiate an intracellular activity this is the intracellular activity from here to here that is initiated with ligand bind with its receptor so what uh, how this uh, what uh, in, in how this intracellular activity initiated and it is reaches to the nucleus uh, i will explain you here when ligand bind to its receptor what happened uh, this is the first we have to understand that this example of receptor here is a kinase linked receptor because you know you are seeing that this uh, uh, receptor will going to uh, activate some kinases now some downstream kinases and as my in my previous lecture i have already explained you that kinase linked receptor are those receptor that are having Uh, uh intracellular tyrosine kinase activity so uh, when this ligand bind with the receptor what happened it uh, activates uh, its intracellular tyrosine kinase activity uh, that activate a relay molecule it could be a protein or non protein in nature what happened when this molecule will get activate this activate uh, an intracellular kinase Uh, this kinase is an enzyme and uh, as the name of kinase implies it uh, uh, what it do it uh, it activate a protein substrate that could be another kinase or another protein by the process of phosphorylation and what this is process of phosphorylation it is a transfer of a phosphate group from high energy atp molecule to our donor substrate and this phosphorylation process is catalyzed by enzyme kinases so what an enzyme kinase do when it will get activated by this protein uh, or relay molecule as you are seeing here this relay molecule uh, activated when ligand bind to the receptor and then this relay molecule activate an inactive kinase to active kinase now what this active kinase will do this active uh, active kinase will transfer a high energy uh, a phosphate uh, group from a high energy atp molecule or donor molecule uh, from uh, and to a substrate that will be 
uh, this inactive kinase so what will happen this inactive uh, kinase will get active and then this uh, active kinase will goes uh, on to uh, activate an other inactive kinase or another inactive protein so this uh, uh, this process of uh, activation will goes down from the uh, uh, cell membrane to the cell nucleus uh, in a form of a cascade and uh, uh, or biochemical changes and the uh, this cascade that is initiated by the binding of a ligand on the receptor uh, so this cascade uh, is from as signal transduction and signal transduction what is signal transduction signal transduction is a process in that a signal that is in the form of a ligand send an extra cellular message through a receptor into the cell cytoplasm from uh, to the nucleus in the form of a cascade so now we will see that what is this cellular response the cellular response is any cell activity it could be cell proliferation it could be cell migration or angiogenesis it could be inhibition of apoptosis means any cell activity that is uh, um, initi initi initiated when a ligand bind to the receptor on the cell surface so uh, how this activity or cellular response initiated uh, and uh, what is the chemical message uh, here we are see, uh, having an example of a ligand that is epidermal growth factor as the na uh, name uh, implies that epidermal growth factor means it is a kind of the factor that will initiate the growth of the cell or the proliferation of the cell so uh, as the, uh, this is a signal means the, this ligand is a signal as it is having the uh, information uh, of cell growth and proliferation that this ligand have to uh, transfer till the nucleus so what will happen when this message will bind to this cell surface receptor then have what happened as i told you in my previous lecture that the the receptor are the uh, mediator of the signal so uh, of the extracellular signal to the inside of the cell so what will happen this message uh, will uh, transfer through this uh, cell sub surface receptor to the inside of the cell and then inside this is going here phosphorylation means here uh, uh, intracellular tyrosine uh, uh, intracellular tyr tyrosine residues are present in the intracellular domain of the kinase this kinase link receptor that will get activated via the process of phosphorylation and then this uh, uh, this activated intracellular domain of the receptor uh, will uh, activate other downstream uh, protein or downstream kinases by the process that i previously explained you in the first slide that is the process of phosphorylation and then this message in the form of the phosphorylation cascade will reach to the uh, nucleus where uh, what happened uh, the nucleus get information of the transcription of all those protein that would be involved in the cell growth and proliferation because this uh, message of cell growth and proliferation is transferred by this uh, ligand that bind with the receptor on the cell surface so the cell will uh, do the activity what will be this activity or cellular response the cellular response and activity of cell will be the uh, translation and transcription of all those protein that will would be involved in the cell proliferation and cell uh, growth 
now we will see what are first messenger and what are second messenger so first messenger is a ligand that bind to a cell surface receptor and in initiates intracellular activity this so first messenger as i told you previously could be any hormone any neurotransmitter it could be uh, any xenobiotics or uh, uh, it could be endobiotics it could be drug it could be bacteria and it could be virus or it could be any amino acid anything means any substance that uh, 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 will bind with the cell surface receptor uh, and uh, initiate uh, intracellular activity that will result on uh, cell response it will be called as first messenger however second messenger will be that that will relay signal that would be received at the receptor surface uh, are you, uh, you i hope you are understanding the second messenger would be the uh, molecule or uh, um, means a non protein molecule that would relay a signal that would ge generated on this uh, after binding the uh, first ligand on the cell surface receptor so this second messenger could be any uh, uh, means a non protein molecule it could be a, a cyclic amp cyclic gmp cyclic amp is a, a, a adenosine monophosphate cyc, uh, cyclic adenosine adenosine monophosphate and uh, cyclic gmp will be guanosine cyclic guanosine monophosphate it could be inositol triphosphate it could be uh, diethyl glycerol and it could be calcium so here uh, we will see what are first messenger and what what uh, will be the second messenger so as uh, you are seeing this ligand uh, is binding with the cell surface receptor so and initiating an intracellular activity that is uh, resulting on a cell response so this ligand is uh, uh, called as first messenger and due to this ligand binding on this cell surface receptor what happened here this activated receptor that activates after binding of ligand on the cell surface receptor activate an enzyme that is adenylyl cyclase and then this adenyl adenyl cyclase uh, convert an atp molecule into cyclic amp this is cyclic amp is a non protein molecule what this uh, non protein molecule do it goes to activate another protein and relay the signal that is generated by binding uh, of ligand on cell surface receptor so this cyclic amp molecule that is a non protein molecule at that that relay the signal of the first ligand uh, to the downstream molecule is termed as the second messenger here are some uh, examples of uh, ligand that are hormone in nature so uh, they uh, the these ligand could be steroid hormone in nature like uh, estrad uh, estradiol or testosterone they could be peptide hormone like oxytocin they could be simple amino acid they could be prostaglandins that are lipid in nature so important thing is that how the we are these uh, uh, ligand is synthesized or generated in the inside the cell and how they reach to the target target site i told you in my first uh, slides that the ligand could be any endogenous uh, substance it could be any exogenous substance so in case of endogenous ligand they could be hormone neurotransmitter or any other protein that could be synthesized in the body and how they reach uh, to the target site 
target site uh, will be the uh, cell that is having the receptor so these uh, ligand synthesize uh, for example in case of hormone and in case of neurotransmitter here we are taking the example of hormone the hormone are uh, for example uh, oxytocin oxytocin where it's oxytocin synthesize oxytocin synthesize in the brain so assuming that this is the uh, means uh, if uh, the um, uh, uh, if the uh, oxytocin is synthesizing in brain so assuming that this if the cell is present in the brain and here the oxytocin is synthesizes how this will reach to the target site that would be the cell is having the uh, oxytocin receptor so this uh, uh, hormone oxytocin will uh, goes into the bloodstream and then it is travel with blood and then it will uh, then uh, diffuse uh, from the endothelial membrane endothelial membrane of the blood vessel uh, to the site where the cell is present and is having the oxytocin receptor then this uh, 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 ligand that is in the form of uh, oxytocin hormone will bind to the receptor and then will initiate the intracellular activity now we are taking the example of neurotransmitters that uh, uh, use as uh, um, uh, ligand so uh, they, they can be uh, dopamine they are uh, noradrenaline that uh, may be serotonin and they may be substance p that is glutamic acid they may be glycine gaba uh, enzyme um, uh, gaba neurotransmitter all these are the neurotransmitter that uh, act as a messenger messenger or signal uh, and they goes to the uh, target cell where they bind with the receptor and then they transfer the signal that is uh, they are carrying uh, to the inside of the cell and initiate our uh, intracellular activity and due to this intracellular activity cell will response uh, as perform a cellular response so how, uh, how we, in this picture we will see how this uh, neurotransmitter uh, uh, that uh, act as a ligand uh, would work so uh, these neurotransmitter uh, synthesize and store in the vessels of vesicles of uh, presynaptic neuron uh, terminal button of presynaptic neuron so these are the neurotransmitter that are uh, enclosed in the vesicle that are uh, present in synaptic button of the presynaptic neuron it is the presynaptic neuron and it is the postsynaptic neuron and these are the synaptic uh, means uh, terminal button or synapse uh, means uh, the end of the neuron so uh, we are seeing that the these vesicles that are having the uh, neurotransmitter in the form of a ligand are present here so how this how these uh, ligand will transfer these signals that they are carrying what happened the uh, when when the neuron is having an action potential so this action potential uh, that uh, uh, that is generated in this cell body of the cell will uh, travel throughout this axon and will reaches to this uh, terminal button where they, they the uh, action potential will uh, uh, act on this vesicles and then vesicles goes on to fuse on the membrane of this uh, terminal button and will rupture and then this ligand that is in the form of the neurotransmitter will release in the synaptic class and this synaptic cleft on the other side of the synaptic uh, synaptic cleft there will be 
receptor of this ligand. So this uh, uh, ligand will bind with the receptor, and then what will happen? The receptor get activated, and then the receptor will initiate intracellular activity, and then this in intracellular activity that will be initiated in the postsynaptic neuron by binding of the ligand on uh, the receptor of the, uh, this uh, this uh, postsynaptic cell will goes uh, on to perform the cellular activity. So the cell uh, activity uh, would be uh, means uh, uh, any it would be any inhibitory activity in case of neuron or it ca can be any uh, any uh, activate uh, uh, stimulatory activity. Uh, it depends on the uh, either the uh, uh, the second neuron uh, will perform the activity or will not perform the activity would be uh, depend on the message of the signal type. Uh, for example, if there will be the uh, the signal will be the uh, neurotransmitter, uh, glutamate neurotransmitter uh, or acetylcholine transmitter. So these are activating transmitter or activating signal. So in this case, the other neuron will be perform uh, its cellular activity. If the uh, ligand uh, will be uh, GABA, so GABA is a, uh, an inhibitory signal. So what will happen? The other neuron uh, will uh, inhibit its cellular activity. After uh, when GABA will bind with the cell surface receptor. So now we will see where this ligand bind to the receptor. So the place where the ligand bind with uh, its receptor, this place is termed as ligand binding site. And this uh, uh, place uh, it would be complementary to the surface, uh, to that surface of ligand that should have to bind with this uh, site. And uh, uh, the ligand binding site is lined with the amino acid residues. As we can see here, this is the uh, site where ligand have to bind, and this we call as li ligand binding site. And this is the uh, here is the ligand that is uh, getting fed into this ligand binding site because this site is complementary to this ligand and this site uh, how this ligand bind with this uh, lig ligand binding site or how this uh, ligand get attached and get attract to this ligand binding site the, the, this uh, attachment is due to the uh, presence of different forces uh, how this force is generated and uh, what is the reason of uh, generation of these forces in the ligand binding site because the ligand binding site is lined with the amino acid residues and you know these amino acid residues having different charges some amino acid are positive charge some amino acid are negative charge and some uh, amino acid are polar so because of this negative pos positive charge and their polarity and hydro hydrophobicity these uh, amino acid residues that are present at the surface of this uh, ligand binding site will make the bonding with the ligand that will be already having some charge or some polarity. Uh, so you are seeing here there are different bonds that are uh, uh, means forming between this ligand binding site and this ligand. Due to this bonding, the ligand is getting fit approximately, approximately fit into this ligand binding site. So we will see here how what type of forces uh, uh, will act uh, in the ligand binding site and how these forces will work. So here we are seeing this zigzag is the ligand binding site and this ligand binding site is having uh, means some charges 
and these charges are due to the presence of uh, amino acid as um, we are getting here an example of lysine lysine is a positively char 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 charged amino acid and uh, um, we know that an amino acid is having an amino terminal or amino group or a carboxylic group so the amino group uh, will be having the positive charge and the carboxylic group is having the negative charge so we are uh, seeing here uh, this here we are seeing the carboxylic group that is having the negative charge and it is present in the ligand binding site of the receptor so what is happening this negative charge of this carboxylic group is uh, making an ionic bond with this ligand that is present in the ligand binding site and what other forces that would be act or that would be take part uh, for the binding of ligand with this receptor this, that will uh, these will be hydrophobic uh, bonds that will be ionic dipole dipole bond and that would be hydrogen bonding hydrogen bonding and that would be charge transfer complexes we will see one by one uh, how these forces will be formed and what do they do uh, and how do they play their role for the binding of a ligand in the ligand binding site so the covalent bonding uh, or the covalent bond that would be formed between a ligand or a ligand binding site on the receptor would be the strongest bond and this type of covalent bonding would be the irreversible bonding between the ligand and the receptor binding site and how this covalent bonding form this covalent bonding form uh, due to the sharing of an electron from each of the two participating atom means one uh, ligand will share its one electron and the uh, amino acid that is present uh, functional group of amino acid or the uh, um, or the uh, carboxylic terminal group uh, of the amino acid or the amino terminal group of the amino acid will share one electron and the ligand will share one electron so that, that uh, this bond uh, covalent bond would be formed between ligand and the uh, receptor binding site so how the hydrogen bonding is formed between the ligand and this receptor binding site as i have already told you that how uh, hydrogen bond form hydrogen bond form uh, between the lone pair of uh, an oxygen atom and between the uh, hydrogen atom of the other functional group so in the case of this salicylic acid this is a ligand and it is a drug it must be it is a drug so it is an exogenous ligand it is having a hydroxyl functional group hydroxyl functional group is having a hydrogen atom and here we are seeing here is another um, hydroxyl group that is uh, present uh, in the amino acid residue uh, that line with this uh, lig ligand binding site you know this uh, uh, that is present the receptor uh, ligand binding site or the uh, the site uh, on the receptor that is line with the amino acid so uh, this hydroxyl group implies that here must be um, a, tyro uh, a tyrosine amino acid because the tyrosine amino acid will be having a hydroxyl group so what be, what will happen this uh, lone pair of oxygen will form the bond with the hydrogen atom to the ligand 
hydroxyl group function, functional hydroxyl group of hydrogen atom ionic or electrostatic bonding are the important bonds uh, that form between ligand and the receptor I, ionic bonding are actually the bonding that form between the uh, positively and negatively charged atom and the electrostatic interaction are those that are formed between two ionized atoms so what in the case of drug and receptor binding uh, the uh, some drugs are ionized at physiological ph um, some drugs are ionized at the physiological ph so they uh, for example in this case here is the drug it is having partial negative charge and this amino acid of protein polypeptide chain is partial positive charge so the bond that form between these two uh, ligand and receptor in this case we are these two uh, ligand both ligand and receptor is having partial positive and negative charge so it will be termed as electrostatic uh, bonding and this uh, uh, bondings are uh, uh, this type of bond is usually weaker and then reversible means uh, uh, our ligand can bind with the receptor with ionic or electrostatic forces or they may displace from the receptor after the breaking of these forces so what is a dipole uh, dipole attractive forces and what is ionic dipole ionic dipole uh, bond form when a uh, between an ion or an other uh, molecule that is uh, that is that will be neutral but having dipole a dipole is a means if a, a dipole is a molecule a dipole molecule is a molecule that is having two charges one is positive charge and one is negative charge so because of the uh, um, same number of positive and negative charge the molecule uh, will be neutral but although will be it will be neutral but it will be having dipole so if a, a bond will form between a neutral uh, molecule that is having dipole and with an other atom or a molecule that is having a charge so this will be called as ionic dipole so in case of drug receptor binding you can see that uh, the amino acid residue that, that is present here is having a functional group that is having a negative charge and uh, in case of a ligand uh, uh, this ligand is a, a, a neutral molecule and it is having a, an ionic dipole because of the uh, equal number of partial positive and partial negative charges so what uh, what will be happen uh, there will be a bond that is formed between these two uh, uh, molecule that is one is ligand and receptor and it, this will uh, show the uh, electrostatic attractions and will, uh, this attraction will enable the uh, ligand to fit in the receptor and other forces dipole 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 attractive forces that will form between positively end of one polar molecule and the negative end of the other molecule so in this case we are seeing that this amino acid uh, that is here present in the active site of the receptor is having hydroxyl group and here it is having uh, partial uh, negative charge and this uh, is uh, making bond with the partial positive uh, part of this uh, ligand molecule so uh, this dipole dipole attractive forces form weaker bond than ionic bond however they are important because of the large uh, number of these bonds that are usually formed between the drug and the receptor are these dipole dipole attractive forces how this uh, uh, 
how this uh, charge transfer complexes will be formed between ligand and receptor if the ligand is having an atom that can donate an electron and it will be present in the ligand binding site of the receptor where uh, the uh, an amino acid of the ligand binding site is ha having the capacity to accept that uh, electron so uh, what would happen as a result one uh, uh, compound uh, or one uh, group that will be the ligand and having the capacity to donate an electron will get partially uh, positively charged with, the, with respect to the charge of the atom of that amino acid that uh, would be having capacity to accept the electron of li ligand. So what will happen, uh, a weak electrostatic bond form between ligand and the uh, receptor and will ha help to fit this uh, ligand into the ligand binding site. However, hydrophobic uh, bond between ligand and the uh, receptor will be formed when both the ligand will be hydrophobic in nature and the amino acid residue of the um, uh, of the uh, receptor binding site of the polypeptide chain would be hydrophobic in nature if the amino uh, uh, acid is hydrophobic in nature it means it is non polar it means it cannot solvable in the water so, uh, because of this insoluble nature of both the ligand and the amino acid uh, uh, functional group, uh, the bond that will be formed between the ligand and the receptor will be the hydrophobic bond and uh, it is also a weak bond but it uh, participates in the uh, binding uh, of ligand in the ligand binding site. However, hydrophobic uh, bond between ligand and the uh, receptor will be formed when both the ligand will be hydrophobic in nature and the amino acid residue of the um, uh, of the uh, receptor binding site of the polypeptide chain would be hydrophobic in nature. If the amino uh, uh, acid is hydrophobic in nature, it means it is non-polar. It means it cannot solvable in the water. So, uh, because of this insoluble nature of both the ligand and the amino acid uh, uh, functional group, uh, the bond that will be formed between the ligand and the receptor will be the hydrophobic bond and uh, it is also a weak bond but it uh, participate in the uh, binding uh, of ligand in the ligand binding site so we will see here how uh, how this hydrophobic bonding and the london dispersive forces play their role for binding of ligand into the ligand binding pocket. So we are uh, seeing here a drug that is non-polar in nature. It is hydrophobic, and the uh, we are uh, this this side here it is going to bind in the ligand binding site of the receptor. It is also non-polar in nature. So what will happen as this uh, drug is non-polar in nature? So it is not having any uh, attraction with the water molecule. So when it will come closer to the uh, site uh, where it should have to be bind, so what uh, it will do, it will displace the water molecule from this side and will uh, come closer to the site uh, of the receptor. Uh, uh, so the um, electrostatic in interaction and then there will be a bond that is formed between uh, this uh, drug and the ligand binding site 
and uh, here are we can see these uh, uh, two dipoles one between the uh, drug and one between the uh, receptor binding site and this dipole are uh, generate because of the uneven distribution of the charges partial positive and partial negative charges over the surface of the um, uh, uh, surface of the molecule and because of this uh, tra transient uh, dipole gener uh, generation uh, one dipole uh, that is having the pi uh, side of the one dipole that will be having the uh, partial negative charge will form a bond with the uh, uh, that side of the drug that is having partial positive charge. So here we will see how the receptor transmit a chemical message when a ligand binds to the receptor. So in uh, my previous slides, I explained how uh, the uh, ligand in the form of a drug uh, come closer to the receptor in its receptor binding site. Of course, this is because of the forces that will happen between ligand and the receptor binding site. That is, these forces include uh, include covalent bonding, hydrogen bonding, hydrophobic bond interaction, and ionic bonding, electrostatic interaction. Because of the uh, participation of all these forces, ligands come uh, closer in the receptor binding site. And now we will see how the receptor after the coming closer uh, of ligand in the ligand binding site, how the receptor transmit a chemical message when a ligand bind to the receptor site. In this, this slide, we will see this phenomena. So, uh, to understand this phenomena, we are taking here two examples. One, is, uh, one example is an ion channel and other example is a G protein copper receptor. So we will see how this ion channel will open uh, when uh, the ligand will bind with the receptor and how this G protein copper receptor will work when uh, will work or will uh, allow to bind uh, with the G protein with the receptor or activate the G protein by the receptor when ligand will bind with this G protein coupled receptor. So we will understand one by one. So taking the first example, that is the example of an ion channel. Uh, what are um, ion channel receptor? I explained you previously that ion channel receptor are uh, found to lie uh, in clo close proximity of uh, an ion channel, or we can say that the ion channel, ion channel receptor are those that uh, made up of the subunit and the subunit are uh, made up of polypeptide subunit and the polypeptide subunit arrange themselves in a way that they make a pore uh, between the subunit and they, this pore serve as ion channel uh, by, by transfer of the ion from uh, extracellular surface of the cell to the intercellular surface of the cell. So here in this case, this receptor is uh, lying near the N ion channel. So we will see how this ion channel will be open after the ligand binding with the receptor. So we are seeing here that uh, a ligand is binded with a receptor in the receptor binding side through hydrogen bonding and weak ionic bonding. Because of this bonding, what will happen when then uh, like this ligand will uh, bind, uh, when the ligand will bind with the receptor, uh, here will be the conformational changes in the receptor. Due to this conformational changes in the receptor, what will happen, the weak hydrogen and ionic bonding that will be present before the opening, uh, before the conformational changes will be converted into the stronger ionic bonding due to the conformational change in the receptor. And because of this strong ionic bonding, what happened? This ion channel will be open. You can see this 
here will be the close ion channel and after the strong ionic bonding the channel is open now what will happen after the opening of the channel it, it, as this channel is a uh, uh, ionic uh, as this is an ion channel what will happen then uh, ion will be moved from outside the cell to the inside of the cell and enable cell to perform its work by initiating the intracellular activity so why all this happen this all happen when ligand bind with the receptor in receptor binding site through these forces that enable a conformational change in the receptor and due to this receptor conformational change uh, what will happen happen the ion channel uh, get open now we are taking another other example that is the g protein coupled receptor this is our g protein coupled receptor ligand binding site and this is our ligand that is present in this ligand binding site of the this g protein coupled receptor so this ligand is bind with this ligand binding site with ionic bonding and hydrogen bonding the, the, these are of course uh, weak bonding I, I previously explained you only covalent bonding is a strong bond, uh, bond that is formed between ion uh, ligand and the receptor however other forces are weak forces but in terms of ligand and receptor, receptor binding most of these forces that play their work are weak attractive forces uh, like hydrogen bonding ionic bonding but what happens when more than one weak forces uh, will be gathered they convert into strong forces and in terms of ligand and receptor binding uh, the weak forces are present in large number means more than one weak forces uh, uh, would come in uh, would generate it uh, that will bind a ligand with the receptor rather than covalent bonding so in uh, in this case what will happen here when a ligand will bind with the ligand binding site with the weak attractive forces that is the ionic bonding and hydrogen bonding due to these weak attractive forces although these are weak but these are more than one so uh, what will happen there there will be a conformational change in this receptor due to this conformational change change a pocket will be formed in the receptor that would serve as a docking site for a, a protein that is a g protein so what will happen a g protein can be easily bind here in this site and then the receptor will activate this g protein so it, it this we have to uh, keep in mind uh, for uh, activation of any protein by a receptor or by an other protein it is necessary that a protein is having a docking site most of the time it is necessary protein is having a docking site where the other protein that has to be activated will goes in the docking site and sit in that docking site and then after that the uh, this protein get activated so in uh, keep, uh, keeping in your mind the g protein couple receptor uh, that i have previously explained you my previous lecture how the receptor uh, means uh, uh, g protein couple receptor perform its activity g protein couple receptor perform its activity by activating a g protein alpha subunit so what will happen here here uh, the docking site that, uh, that is generated by the conformational change uh, uh, of the receptor and uh, what uh, happened uh, they are due to this conformational change the alpha subunit of g protein will bind it will come in and fit in this docking site of the receptor and then uh, the other subunit beta and gamma subunit will be detached from this uh, uh, g protein and then alpha subunit will goes on to uh, activate or open the other ion channel then ion will goes inside and uh, initiate the intracellular activity of receptor and respond the cell uh, to perform its work so my dear student the, this is the book you can consult with the, this book and these are some web links 
you can also uh, uh, do more reading from these web links. This is a, a one research article. It is about the receptor site. You can also clear your views by uh, reading these uh, this uh, research article. Thank you very much and be safe from COVID-19. Uh, by avoid touching your uh, by uh, avoid shaking your hands. Avoid come closer with each other. Disinfectant your uh, belongings. Wash your hands with 20 seconds with soap and uh, avoid touching your face and stay home and be uh, protected yourself with uh, by using face mask while you go outside thank you very much and allah bless